the technical sale. You've got this really intricate product and you've been really well trained on it. But you start talking the technicalities way too early and you put the prospect completely off and actually hurt the relationship and hinder the sale down the line. Here to tell us about how to do the technical sale correctly is Julie Futcher. Julie, thank you so much for joining me on scottcundill.com. Oh, you're very welcome, Scott, and thank you for inviting me. Yes, this technical sale. Um, I've worked with a lot of um, sales engineers and people that work within the technical sale environment. And this one thing that keeps coming out in the training rooms when, I've, when I'm you know, working with these delegates is um, the inability, no, that's the wrong word, the, um, they, they don't seem to see the importance of a relationship build. And you're right, they go, um, they want to get straight into the technical, you know, they've gone in to spec out a project or, you know, small, large project, whatever it may be. And it's straight into that technical talk without building this relationship. And in sales, it's so, so important because, you know, these, these relationship build sales are ones that last longer. Taking the time to find out a little bit more about the business and what's happening within the business, which are all things that build up in that, um, help to sort of strengthen that, that uh, personal relationship, that relationship sell. You know, you take time to do that, you unearth so much more, um, you know, possible business, more opportunities than if you've just gone in in tunnel vision and looked at that project that you are, um, you know, going in to talk about. So this is why I kind of get bang on about, you know, in technical sales, your client is a person too. It is important that we explore those. But unfortunately, in a lot of sales training rooms that I'm in, that that little element gets forgotten. I totally understand where you're coming from, Julie. Now, what happens with these technical salespeople, though, is they, they counter argue that by saying, but the person's only going to buy based on the technicalities and the specifications of what I'm talking about. That's the only reason they're going to buy. Can you just put their mind at ease and help them understand that that's actually not the only reason people buy? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what people have got to get their heads into is technical spec specifications or whatever are important, because if we're talking to um, somebody about a specific project, there are those, but you've got to picture the scene. You, if you're pitching for a job, you're not the only one, you know, you're not going to be the only company going in. And if your products um, and your specs are very similar to two or three other businesses, how does that client then determine who they buy from? And this is what comes down to, who do I like the most? You know, it's similar with me in sales training. Um, sales trainers, we tend to do very similar sort of thing. We might have our own different styles, but we do a similar sort of thing. What it boils down to, and the reason somebody picks me, is they like me, they buy into me more than, you know, than, than the competition. They like me better. And this is the same in the technical cell. And this is what I take a lot of um, time to spend with, with sales engineers and salespeople in that technical arena, get their heads into this because this is so important. It sets you apart from your competition. And you, you build that relationship with somebody, particularly in some of these large corporate businesses where there are lots of big multi-million pound projects going on. You, know, you build that relationship with somebody, they become an advocate for you within an organization and they can champion you and you can get your foot in the door with other projects you might never seen. So it, it's this that I, I take a lot of pains to spend time with sales engineers and, and talking about. This is interesting now, because if you have a look at the way that uh, sales works in general is you, you're always going to be meeting human beings. Yes. And the goal of that interaction is to build some form of rapport so that they feel safe and comfortable with you. Because yeah, absolutely. if there is any doubt in their mind that even if your technical specs are slightly better than someone else's, if there's any doubt that they feel a little bit unsafe or insecure with you or your brand or your company, they're going to choose somebody else. Agreed. To that. 
Um, so a lot of the time, and um, one of the places I start with, so I, I absolutely agree. Let me just pick up on that point. I absolutely agree with what you're saying. The way we get round it, and I spend a lot of time talking to uh, sales engineers and salespeople about understanding personality types. You know, there's a lot of personality profiles. I'm sure a lot of them have done disc profiling when they've gone for jobs, et cetera. And that's great. But in a sales arena, you cannot send your customer a personality profile before you go in. So I use the technique. I use the guy called Dr. Tony Alessandra's director, relator, socializer, thinker. These are very visual. Um, so, but we start with understanding your personality style. You know, to be a great salesperson, you've got to be a chameleon um, and you've got to be adaptable. But if you understand your style, how you communicate, what makes you tick, then when you meet somebody, you're assimilating whether are they like me or are they different? If they're different, I need to adapt. Yeah. Human beings naturally gravitate towards other human beings that we think are like ourselves this is why you and i got on so well scott you know we're you know out there we're personality. amazing people we're amazing people and we two amazing people got together and created this but you know this this is so important I, you know i'll give you an example with my personality type i'm what we call a director socializer you know straight to the point but a party animal but i meet somebody who is a thinker who are very detailed people they don't like that up in your face I have to pull everything back. I have to adapt my style. I have to talk in detail, which as a director hurts, I have to say. Um, there's a little person inside me with a fork digging it in my leg. Um, that is that painful, but it's what I have to do. And this in sales is so important. People naturally gravitate towards other people we think are like ourselves. It's that comfort factor. It goes back to, if you start alienating people, you're not going to get the sale. And this is what can happen if we don't consider the human element within the sales process. I agree, um, Julie. And one of the key things that I look at with regards to the, the technical sales process, and, and I want to get your feedback on this as well, is the idea that with technical specifications, they can be handed or, or imparted very quickly. They can be done yeah. on a one page, a piece of paper. Someone can look yeah. at them and go, oh, those are your technical specs done. So in other words, if you're going to spend human to human time with somebody, don't waste it on technical specifications because they can get that separately. They can get that offline. They can research research themselves. Use the face time to build the rapport and let them feel comfortable with you and your company knowing that they are in good hands going forward. How would you react to that notion that people can now get technical specifications quickly offline and research and make those decisions themselves? Versus yeah, they, the human yeah they can absolutely but this again we go back to um when you're meeting a client you may want to talk about that they might want to talk about that but there's a small part of the meeting you know in the training that i deliver to my clients i have a structure that i train which helps people go through a process of understanding all elements about the business um you know present situation current challenges and the technical side of things slots into all of this, but it's an element of running a meeting. Too many times I see people go into meeting and, and I've sat there, um, you know, back in my sales career, they go straight into a meeting and the first thing they do, it's right, you know, thanks for the meeting. I'm here to talk about this project, bang, straight in. And I've taken control of meetings back and go, we've let that happen. And then go, right, you know, that's fine. But let's talk about the rest of the business. You know, what's happening? What's expanding? What's your plans over the next five years? Um, you know, are you growing organically? Are you going for by acquisition? How many staff? All of those elements help to show the customer that you're interested in them. But the salesperson within me is going, they're expanding, tick. They're acquiring another company and they're keeping the process tick, more business tick. And so I'm feathering my sales pipeline. I'm understanding how much more business, let's be frank, you know, bottom line, be blunt, how much more business that customer is going to give me. And it's my, my job then to open that out and ensure that that relationship, that customer, as you say, feels comfortable with me, trusts me. And then I can open the doors to the rest of the business. And this is why it's so important. Um, and I get a bit preachy about this, <laughs> Scott. You know, oh, what very else good. Is there? 
don't shoot yourself in the foot. I've got a, I've got a little story, if I may, sure. of a client that I've worked with. Um, and uh, they are, they have sales engineers and I've done some training with them. And they took on board a young lady who her background was not sales engineering at all. But what she had was a little bit of tenacity and she was just genuinely a nosy person. I loved her, by the way. Don't get me wrong. This is nothing against her. She went in to see a client, um, prospective client who um, had come out to her and said, look, I can't see you today. And this had been a current problem. She'd read off the client system that every sales engineer had gone in, that this was what happening with the meeting. So the client comes out, I can't see you today. Um, I'm really sort of up to my neck. We've got a problem. Now, instead of saying, OK, fine, don't worry. She said, well, oh, that's a shame. What's your problem? Oh, you know, this machine has broken down. I've got this part that's not working. She said, hmm, have you thought of this? And he looked at her and said, what do you mean? She said, I, I, I can help you with this. And the next thing she knows, she's being marched through reception into the production arena. And she's there with her head into a machine with um, some of the other sort of technical people and maintenance people. And they're discussing the parts and what they can do to help. It's amazing how people want interest. to talk about their business. Exactly. People want to talk yeah. about it. That's what they want to talk about. Yeah. They don't really want to talk about yeah. the issue uh, specifically with regards to the product. So I totally understand where you're coming from, Judy. So the last question to you then is, is from a sales ace perspective, from your, yes. your training perspective, where do you start with a client? How do you start them changing their mindset? Do you, do you give them a workshop? I mean, they've got to get out of this kind of blinkered yeah. technical self. So how, do you, how do you do that? So, yeah, you're right. We do workshops um, in today's climate with COVID, etc. They've been online, but hopefully now we're lifting out. I'll do those face to face. And whatever stage of a salesperson is in their career, um, I always cut right back to basics. So when we're talking about client meetings, the first part of the first half of the day, right back to the basics of what sales actually is. Um, we look at um, how to build those relationships. We look at all the soft um, uh, skills like body language and mirroring and things like that. And in the afternoon, we get down to the nitty gritty of a structure of a meeting, what to do, how to say it. Um, you know, one of the things that always comes out of this in the second half of the day is my analogy of sales is like nightclubbing. Um, because there's always somebody in the room that tries to go in with a close too soon because they've forgotten all the training that we've done in the morning, all the fluffy stuff that I talk about. And my sales is like nightclubbing analogy is, you know, you don't go into a, a nightclub um, and go get your coat, you pulled a, a, a young thing at the bar or as, you know, somebody good looking at the bar and expect to pull. You don't. You buy them a drink, have a dance, go a wooing. And then at the end of the night, if you say get your coat, you pulled you're more likely to be successful. Sales is exactly the same. You've got to go through that process of building that relationship before you can successfully get there. So, and that always makes people laugh. And sometimes they're sick in the mouth because some of the youngsters don't think us old ones, you see, used to do all that sort of thing. Um, but there we go. So that that is it. It's a workshop and we take them through it. And it's really surprising. And I love, this is what I love about the job that I do is the light bulbs that go on over some of these real, you know, experienced technical guys and girls. Um, and, you know, they, they, they kind of so much and they go, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. So it's lovely to see. And that's why I love doing what I do. Julie, really interesting. Um, I'm going to put your details in the bottom. So get hold of Julie. Real, thank you. Sales ace, uh, sales ace. Um, once again, Julie Butcher, thank you so much for joining me on scottcundall.com. Yeah, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure, Scott. See you soon.